US 322. Yeah. Alright. Hello everyone. I am Quartermon437. And today I am going to be taking you on a virtual tour of this US route. I will be explaining the control cities on this route, which is the places that this route is signed to go to. And I'll give some insight as well as to what I think the signage should look like. US 322 is one of the original US roads that was originally signed back in 1926. And we can see here that it goes from Cleveland, Ohio, diagonally across Pennsylvania, eventually ending up in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It is a pretty important route for local traffic in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And it is also the main route for traffic in western Pennsylvania to be able to get to Harrisburg. If you like what you see here today, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as I will be doing more road content like this in the future. So the beginning of US Route 322 in Cleveland is a bit convoluted. Here is, as far as I can tell, the first sign that we get that US 322 will be beginning here in the public square in downtown Cleveland. And if we go up the road a little bit, here we can see our first reassurance shield for US Route 322. And we can see right off the bat, we are also concurrent with US Route 6, although they do not have this reassurance shield up anymore. They actually took this down. And I had to look back as far as 2009 on Google Street View to find this picture. And it's really weird because this picture is actually really high quality for Google Street View in 2009. Most other images, most other Google Street View imagery I've seen from this year is just as bad as 2007 or 2008 Street View imagery, so really weird. But anyway, we are not concurrent with US Route 6 for very long, as here at East 13th Street, US 322 will turn right. And then here at Chester Avenue, US 322 makes a left turn, although for some reason there is not any sign telling you that that is the case. However, if we turn on to Chester Avenue, we get this reassurance shield for US 322. So, in fact, we are still on this route going on to Chester Avenue. The first major junction that we have on US 322 is good old Interstate 90. So, here we get a sign saying that Westbound traffic to Interstate 71 and 77 to keep left, and eastbound 90 traffic to Ohio Route 2 to keep right. Although, on the exit that will take you to US 322 on Interstate 90, we just get a sign for Chester Avenue. US 322 shield is not listed, which is weird, but hey, it is what it is. Here is a view of Interstate 90 as we go over the bridge on US 322. And then the next junction with a number road that we have is Ohio Route 10. And this is actually the eastern end of Ohio Route 10. You can only go westbound on Ohio Route 10. And then here, just after going through only one light past Ohio Route 10, we get a junction with US Route 20, and we can see that in order to stay on US 322, we have to make a left turn because it will be going onto Euclid Avenue. 
So here, as we get to Euclid Avenue, we can see that we will have another concurrency with US Route 20. Although this concurrency is very brief as well, as only a couple, as only a couple blocks later, US Route 322 splits off to go onto Mayfield Road, and that is the name that this US Route will have for the rest of its time in the Cleveland metro area. Although we are still not quite done with all the turns we have to make as Mayfield Road will continue at this left turn. And then the next numbered route we meet after that is Ohio Route 175 after going down the road a few miles. And then we meet Interstate 271, and it is signed for going back to Cleveland northbound, as well as Erie, and southbound it is signed for Columbus. And then as we look at Interstate 271, we can see our first control city of Gates Mills. And I do not really agree with that. I think it should be... Well, I'll talk about this in a moment, because east of here, US-322 really does not have a whole lot of major junctions in Ohio. In fact, there's really only one more left, and for about 40 miles or so, it just intersects Ohio State routes in random nothing little towns that I don't think should be signed at all. So we're just going to jump ahead a little bit and continue eastbound. We go forward about 40 miles or so and we have a junction with Ohio Route 11 and it is a north and southbound Ohio route. And it has the control cities of Ashtabula going northbound and Youngstown going southbound. And I believe that US 322 should be signed for Youngstown right off the bat because of this junction right here that will take you down to Youngstown if you stay east on 322 this whole time up to now. And if we look on Ohio Route 11, we can see that US 322 is signed for Orwell and Jamestown, Pennsylvania, and I disagree with both of those places. I'm not going to get into what it should be signed for westbound, because, spoilers, I think there is actually an instance on this road where I think Pennsylvania actually outdoes Ohio in control city science. Crazy, am I right? But yeah, I do not think that Jamestown should be on there because it's a really small town. We only need one Pennsylvania state route and only a little further up the road is Meadville where we have an intersection with Interstate 79 and it is by far the largest town that US 3.2 runs through east of Cleveland and here as we get back onto US 322 we can see our first mileage sign in this whole video and Jamestown is on it again no I think it should be Meadville and in fact it goes southbound to Pitt like Interstate 79 goes southbound to Pittsburgh so you can make the argument that it could even be signed for Pittsburgh right here. Now as we enter Pennsylvania we don't get a welcome to Pennsylvania sign we just get a sign that we're entering Crawford County so that is about as good as we'll get. And here in Jamestown we meet Pennsylvania Route 58 and in fact we're going to have another concurrency with Pennsylvania Route 58. Although, once again, this concurrency is very brief, and as Pennsylvania 58 splits off, we get the towns of 
Greenville and Conneaut Lake on this sign. And I don't think that Conneaut Lake should be on that sign. Again, I think it should be Meadville or Pittsburgh. We meet US Route 6 again in Conneaut Lake. And again, we're going to be concurrent with it. But I I just think that it would be better to have Meadville up there, which US 6 also goes to and intersects Interstate 79 there. We meet Pennsylvania Route 18, which is actually the longest state route in Pennsylvania. And we can see if we go south on it, the control city is Greenville. And if we make a left turn onto an unsigned four-digit route, unsigned four-digit Pennsylvania route, we get Linesville. And here at this intersection, US 322 is still signed for Coney Out Lake, which I'll say it once again, I disagree with that. Here in Conneaut Lake, we meet U.S. Route 6 again, and we're going to have a concurrency of three routes, all going in three different directions, uh, between U.S. Route 322, U.S. Route 6, and Pennsylvania Route 18. And in fact, Pennsylvania Route 285 is also concurrent here, although we don't get a sign because I'm guessing maybe there's just too many shields here as it is. They don't have room for Pennsylvania 285, or I'm not really sure. Here at the Sheets, Pennsylvania Route 285 splits off to go eastbound, and we can see that it has the signage for Geneva and Cochranton. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that town, but spoilers, this is not the only road that US 322 meets that will be going to that town. And here, weirdly enough, we get a Junction Pennsylvania 18 sign, which is really strange. However, though, that is because Pennsylvania 18 leaves US 6 and 322 to go northbound. And in fact, if we look back at this mileage sign, we can see the, the places of Conneautville and Gerard sign for Pennsylvania 18. I'm guessing that's Gerard, Ohio. And here we can see that we're going to have a roundabout as we get closer to Meadville. And we're also going to be intersecting US Route 19. And we'll also be concurrent with US 19 for a little bit. And we're also meeting Pennsylvania Route 98 going northbound. And US 19 splits off for Mercer. And then Pennsylvania 98 has the control city of. I'm going to list it on the screen because. I did not get a more clear look at this sign because I assumed that I would remember it. But anyway, here we go into the roundabout and we can see once again that we will be concurrent with US Route 6 and 19. And on the sign in the distance, we can see the control city of Meadville. Just a little further up the road, we have our junction with Interstate 79, and it has the awesome control cities of Erie and Pittsburgh. So that is perfectly done, PennDOT. And as we can also see here, we have a beautiful view as we approach this southbound ramp for Interstate 79. Although the last few pictures that we've been looking at have all been from November 2022 and I imagine they were taken around the middle of the month because many of these trees do not have their leaves on them and I can only imagine how beautiful this would look 
if it had been just a few weeks earlier or so. But either way, once again, great signage at this intersection and just a truly fantastic view here at the southbound ramp for I-79. It is by far the best scenery we've had on this road so far. And if we look at Interstate 79, we can see that our concurrency is signed for Meadville because we are not quite to downtown yet. And we cross French Creek and we can see that US 6 and 19 will be leaving and we have to continue straight onto US 322 East, which is Park Avenue. We get this nice sign welcoming us to Meadville as US 6 and 19 split off, and in the background we can also see that we will have to make a right turn to continue on US 322 eastbound. We make that right turn, although we only go a couple blocks before we have to make another right turn to stay on US 322 east. And we get a mileage sign for Cochranton or however that town is pronounced, and Franklin now on the bottom line, which I suppose is all right. Franklin is the biggest town that we will meet for quite some time going eastbound out of Meadville, and we have a junction with U.S. Route 62 and Pennsylvania Route 8 there, so I think it is worth signing it is worth signing Franklin here. Here we meet Pennsylvania Route 173 and it is signed for Cochranton. And now we can see at this intersection we are signed for just Franklin. We are technically in the limits of the huge borough for its tiny population of like 4,800 people or something like that, I think. And this this borough is called Sugar Creek. And if we look at Google Maps, this place is huge. And if you want to compare it, here is Franklin, which has about a thousand more people or so, has a population of about 6,000. and. Just look how much smaller these town limits are. But anyway, here we meet the southern end of Pennsylvania Route 427, and we can see at this intersection, now we are getting signed for Franklin and Clarion. Clarion 32 miles away. Here at Pennsylvania 417 we have this interesting looking intersection just across French Creek from downtown Franklin which we will be crossing for the second time and we can see we have to make another right turn to get on to staying on US 322. And here on Pennsylvania 417, we get these overhead signs telling us that US 322 will be meeting US 62 and Pennsylvania Route 8. And as we get back onto US 322, we get more overhead signs, which just say East 322 and North 62 and 8. We don't get a 2 on this sign, even though we are technically still not meeting either of those roads until we get downtown, after we have crossed French Creek once again. And now here in downtown Franklin, we get these interesting overhead signs that just have text on them. We don't see the shields for US 322, US Route 62, or Pennsylvania Route 8. So that is pretty interesting, although when we make our left turn to be concurrent with Pennsylvania Route 8 and US 62, 
we got the regular shield version of the signs instead of what we had seen before. Once again, this concurrency is very brief, and northbound US 62 and Pennsylvania Route 8 make a left turn to split from US 322, and we continue straight ahead. And here is the actual split where we continue straight. And then here at 8th Street in Franklin, we make another left turn to stay on eastbound US 322. And as we leave Franklin, we cross over the Allegheny River and we have quite a nice view out the right side, out our right window, although not so much out of our left window because there is a fence on this bridge. But either way, this is a pretty nice looking water gap here just outside of Franklin. And now we see a mileage sign that has just Clarion on it, which uh, I'm not sure if I agree with that or not. The town of Brookville is just a little bit further up the road. It's a major truck stop. And we meet two Pennsylvania state routes there. Although Clarion also has a university there, so I'm not sure I could really go either way. I would also like to hear some of your guys' opinions on what this road should be signed for as well. And we can discuss that down in the comments if you guys would like. So for now, I'm just going to skip ahead to Clarion. I'm not really going to focus so much on the plethora of junctions we have with Pennsylvania state routes for these next 30 miles or so. Although I will show this one here with Pennsylvania Route 338 signed for Coal Hill and Knox. And there is one very specific reason I'm showing this one, this intersection, and no more. Here at Pennsylvania Route 338, we get our first mention of Interstate 80. US 322 is parallel to US 80 for a lot of Western Pennsylvania, and almost all the intersections that US 322 will have can take you to Interstate 80. So this is the first one where they mention Interstate 80. But other than that, we're just going to skip ahead to Clarion because I looked and pretty much all the signs just say Clarion until we get there. So here in Clarion, we get a junction with Pennsylvania Route 68, which can take you to Pennsylvania Route 36 or Interstate 80. And Pennsylvania 68 is signed for Leaper and East Brady. However, you can't really see the Pennsylvania 68 sign because it is hidden behind one of these trees. And here on Pennsylvania 68, we get signed for Brookville and Franklin. So I think I, th I think I think that, that, is, that is fine because of the reasons that I mentioned earlier, the state route junctions and also being a major truck stop. As we get to the little town of Strattonville, we get a mild sign with Corsica and Brookville. So. Corsica is like the next little town just down the road on US 322. And just a few more miles up the road, we get our direct interchange with Interstate 80. And the signage here is pretty much the opposite quality of the junction we had with Interstate 79. It gets the horrendous choices of Dubois and Sharon. Although if I'm being with if I'm being honest with you guys, 
I think that I wouldn't mind seeing Dubois as a secondary control city between this junction and Dubois because in Dubois we meet quite a bunch of US routes and it is also the largest town that these roads will will intersect the largest town that these roads will meet um, east of Franklin for again quite a distance so yeah I wouldn't mind seeing Dubois as a control like a secondary control for Interstate 80 going eastbound although it definitely should be New York City on this sign. There is no need for anything else. And westbound, it should absolutely be Youngstown. Or you could even argue that it should be Cleveland on this sign because Interstate 80 goes to Cleveland and, you know, it's Cleveland. Here if we look on Interstate 80, for our US 322 exit, we can just see that it is only a sign for Strattonville and we do not get an eastbound control city because we had just left Strattonville. So we will have to get back on US 322 and find another sign. And that control city would be Brookville, which is fine by me, I suppose. And just another few miles down the road, we have a concurrency with Pennsylvania Route 949, which of course can take you back to Interstate 80. And we can see that we are going to be concurrent with southbound 949 here. And in Corsica, we get Brookville and Clarion as the sign for US322. Once again, this concurrency is very brief, and southbound Pennsylvania 949 goes to Somerville. Here, as we approach the town of Brookville, we get our concurrency with both southbound Route 36 and northbound Pennsylvania 28, and once again, we get another sign for Interstate 80. And then Pennsylvania Route 28 is signed for Leaper and New Bethlehem. Here we get a fun reminder that once again we are on three different roads going three different directions all at once. So that is pretty cool. And here as we get into downtown Brookville we see that Southbound Pennsylvania 36 will be splitting off and it gets signed for Punxsutawney and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that town name because frankly, I don't think it should be there at all. I think the only reason it is signed is because of a junction that Pennsylvania 36 will have with US Route 219 and I don't think that makes it worthy of being signed here. I think that that should be Altoona because Altoona is pretty famous. It's it was established by the Pennsylvania Railroad, um, Penn State Altoona, fairly big city, at least for Central Pennsylvania standards. And just frankly, I think I would like to see a state route take such a big swing because Altoona is like. 70 miles south of here. I think that would be really cool. And spoilers, I think that I'm justified for being able to say that because of some other signage we'll see on US-322. And as we head back towards US Route 322, we can see a lot of shields here at this intersection. And US 322 will now be signed for Reynoldsville going eastbound. And I do not agree with that at all. I think it should be Dubois because of all the junctions that we will have there. 
As we start to leave Brookville, we get this sign telling us that the road we see up ahead is actually a street and we will have to continue um, on US 322 and Pennsylvania 28 by making a left turn and we can see that Pennsylvania 28 gets the control cities of Richardsville and Ridgeway. So here are the shields as we make the left turn to stay on these two roads. And then at the eastern edge of Brookville, Pennsylvania Route 28 splits off northbound for another junction with Interstate 80. And then here we get another mild sign, and I have not been on US 322 through this area. I've only been on it as far west as Pittsburgh. And this surprised me, honestly. We are getting clear field on the bottom line here. 39 miles away. That's crazy for Pennsylvania signage. So, yeah, uh, uh, that is something I did not expect. And you know what? I'm going to be honest here. I don't think I even agree with it. I think it should still be Dubois, or at least maybe Dubois should be on this sign as the first line or something. But yeah, believe it or not, I do not agree with signing the farther away town, at least not just yet, because we have all these other important junctions coming up in Dubois. So here in Reynoldsville, or at least approaching downtown Reynoldsville, we meet the southern end of Pennsylvania Route 950, and it gets the signage of Falls Creek. And then we also get a junction with the northern end of Pennsylvania Route 310, and it is one of like 8,000 roads you can get onto to go to Punxsutawney. So that is what that is signing for here. And then after leaving Reynoldsville, we get a mileage sign for Luthersburg and Clearfield. When I was getting all these pictures, and trust me, there's still quite a long ways to go in this video. I probably documented way more of this road than I really need than I really needed to. I'm still barely over a quarter of the way through this road. And we still have lots more slides to go. But anyway, as I was looking for these signs and stuff, I thought that maybe Luthers Luthersburg didn't belong there, but I think you'll see soon enough why it would be on that sign. Here as we start to approach Dubois, we can see that we will have a junction with US Route 119, although before we even get to the intersection, we get a mileage sign for Dubois on the top line and Ebensburg on the bottom line, which is really interesting because that is actually the southbound control city for US 219, which we will be meeting a little bit more down the road after our junction with 119. So I think it's really interesting that here we don't get a control city for 119, but yet we do for 219, which we will not be meeting once again until just a little bit later. So here at the turn to get on to US 119, we get Clearfield going straight for US 322. Dubois going northbound, which you can take, well, US 119 will dead end at US 219, and then that will be the road to Dubois, and then southbound 119 is signed for Punxsutawney. Once again, another road that you can get to, another road that will take you to that town. I think there are probably more that I haven't shown. And as we get on the other side of that intersection, now we can see we have a mileage sign for Luthersburg and Clearfield. Now we meet US Route 219 and we will be concurrent with southbound US 219. We get Clearfield 
Evansburg and Brookville on the sign. Clearfield and Evansburg being the signage for our concurrency. And then we get another mileage sign once we are on South 219 and East 322 for Luthersburg, Clearfield, and Evansburg. And also, I think that is the correct control city for US 219, even though it's pretty small, but it has a pretty major junction with US 22, and it also meets 422 there, so yeah. Now as, we, now as we get into Luthersburg, we can see, wow, there are three individual mileage signs with a total of five control cities listed for US 219, US 322, and we also meet Pennsylvania Group 410 here. So I'm pretty sure I don't need to show any more signs telling us what the control city for US 219 will be, but then... Once we split with South 219, it goes south, it gets signs for Kerwinsville, so PennDOT at its finest. And then once we're just on US 322 by itself, we get a sign for Rockton and Clearfield. And frankly, at this point, I disagree with Clearfield. I think we should just go straight for State College at this point because that is where we will have, eventually we will have a concurrency with Interstate 99 and US 220. That is where the northern end of that concurrency will be, you know, Penn State University and also pretty much the largest town that US 322 will have in its entire run, except for when it gets into the Philly metro area at the tail end of its eastbound route in Pennsylvania. But anyway, here in Rockton, we get another option to go to Dubois, and we can see that Clearfield is now 13 miles away. We get this random little road that goes off to home camp, which is really none of our business, honestly. And we get another sign saying that Clearfield is 13 miles away, as we have to bear right to stay on US 322. We get another mileage sign saying that Clearfield is 13 miles away, and now Phillipsburg becomes our bottom line control city at 30 miles away. Here we meet Pennsylvania Route 153, and we will be concurrent with southbound Pennsylvania 153, and then we can see a green sign directing us to Clearfield, and that northbound Pennsylvania 153 will take you to Interstate 80. Here we got a mileage sign for Clearfield being 6 miles away, and Phillipsburg being 23 miles away. We don't really get a control city for Pennsylvania Route 153 specifically because both of these routes will be going to Clearfield. And just after the beginning of our concurrency with Pennsylvania 153, we go down a hill and we get this really nice view. And you might also note that at this point we are actually on a four lane divided expressway. Although, there aren't really any interchanges on it, and it's not really that noteworthy. We cross the west branch of the Susquehanna River as we come into Clearfield, and we will split from southbound Pennsylvania 153, which will go into downtown Clearfield. And then here we get a sign telling us that Phillipsburg is 16 miles away as we have to make this left turn to stay on US 322 to Interstate 80. And here we have a full freeway kind of intersection with Pennsylvania 879 and it is signed for um, some German 
some German looking town name and Kerwinsville. I'm not gonna try and pronounce that. And that is also the place that is listed on this sign at the bridge for eastbound Pennsylvania 879 to Interstate 80. And US 322 is still signed for Phillipsburg. And then as we leave Clearfield, we get this sign for Woodland and Phillipsburg. Again, I think pretty much out of Dubois, State College should have been our bottom line town. Although we have a few junctions with Pennsylvania State Roots in Phillipsburg. So, I mean, I guess it's not terrible. But maybe that's also just the bias in me wanting... State College to be there. And here we meet Pennsylvania Route 970, the southern end of it, which is also to Interstate 80. And on this sign, we get Phillipsburg, Shawville, and Woodland, which isn't even on Pennsylvania 970, which I would assume is the reason for signing it. And once we leave that intersection, we get a mileage sign for Phillipsburg and State College. Woohoo! State College is on the bottom line. Yay! 35 miles away. We go through another small little community on the way to Phillipsburg, and we can see that it is 8 miles away. And State College now 32 miles away. As we approach Phillipsburg, we get a sign telling us that State College is 25 miles away as we intersect Pennsylvania State Route 53, which will be going north to Tylertown, and we will be joining southbound Route 53, which will be going to Coalport. Although in the typical US 322 concurrency fashion, we can see that southbound Pennsylvania 53 will be splitting off, and we get a pull-through sign just for US 322 with nothing on it, as we cross Moshannon Creek into my home county of Center County. Southbound Pennsylvania Route 53 splits off to go into downtown Phillipsburg, and we can see that it is signed for 2 Pennsylvania 350 right here. And as we make a left turn to stay on US 322, we can see we are also 2 Pennsylvania Route 504. And at our junction with Pennsylvania 504, we get its control city of Unionville going eastbound. And westbound 504 will actually dead end in downtown Phillipsburg, just a couple blocks from here, so I don't really know why Pennsylvania 504 doesn't just end here, and it continues into town, but what, what, whatever. Here we can see that we are signed for State College, 24 miles away, here as we leave Phillipsburg. And then we got a mileage sign for Port Matilda being 12 miles away and State College 24 miles away as we get not one but two reassurance shields for US 322 right here. And as we get closer to Port Matilda, we can see that once again we will enter a four lane divided expressway. Although this one, like the one by Clearfield, is not really that interesting. There's only one partially, like, full interstate-style interchange. And, yeah, we'll talk about that a little more in just a second. Here, we can see that the eastbound lanes of US-322 are actually quite far away from the westbound lanes. And shoutouts to my dad. He hates going around this curve at nighttime and in the winter because this road sucks to drive on at those times. 
here we get our one interchange on the expressway portion of US 322, which is for East Mountain Road and Reese Hollow Road. And on the westbound side, you get a regular exit ramp over here. We just have an at grade intersection. And at this interchange, we have the option of going westbound for Phillipsburg and eastbound to State College. Here we get our first mention of Interstate 99, which is signed northbound for Altoona and southbound for Port Matilda, even though the ramp to get on to southbound Interstate 99 and US 220 is also the same ramp that will take you to Port Matilda. So I don't know why just Altoona isn't there. And then after that sign, we get a sign saying that if you want to go to Milesburg, you should take the next exit because for whatever reason, we're not supposed to take northbound 99 to Interstate 80 West to go to Milesburg. We have to we have to go on alternate route 220. I think it's really strange and weird, but it is what it is, I suppose. And then we also got a sign saying that if you want to go to State College, you should take US 322 East. As we will be concurrent with northbound Interstate 99 and US 220, and that is where 322 will split off for State College, and Interstate 99 just kind of goes around town. So here is our split. We get eastbound 322 to north 99 and 220 State College, and southbound 99 for Altoona and Port Matilda. And we can see yet again that if you want to get to Interstate 80, that you can you can use US 322. Here at the ramp leading to Port Matilda, I just wanted to point out this really silly signage. Since this is the route that obviously PennDOT, I guess, really wants you to take to get to Milesburg, we get a regular mileage sign with Port Matilda and Altoona on it, but they couldn't even get a mileage sign with three towns on it, so we just get this awkward looking Milesburg 19 sign right below it. PennDOT at its finest, once again, so stupid. Why, why are there just not three lines on this sign? Moving on. Here is our ramp to get onto northbound US, US 220 and Interstate 99. As we can see it on our left. And as soon as we get onto Interstate 99 and US 220, we go across this big bridge. And we have a nice view of the valley, although I don't really have any pictures looking off to the sides. But trust me, it is very beautiful through here as most of Interstate 99 is. And then we got a mileage sign for State College and Williamsport. I'm kind of surprised that Lewistown isn't on here, honestly, because that is the next control city that US 322 will have. All of these roads will take you to State College, although US 220 and I-99 are the ones that will take you to Williamsport. So, very interesting. As we climb the mountain, we can see that we are actually very close to the bridge up here, so I think that's pretty interesting, and I believe this is right around mile marker 66 on Interstate 99. And up ahead, we go through a mountain cutting. And as you can see here, there is a lot of tarp and rocks because this is where they uncovered a bunch of acidic rock, which they had not anticipated to be here at mile 67.2. So that delayed the construction of Interstate 99 quite a lot. And here we get the unsigned exit the unsigned exit 69 for 
Atherton Street. I don't get why there isn't an exit 69 sign on the overhead. But on our pull through for Interstate 99 and the two US routes, we get Lewistown and Belfont. Which, yeah, shouldn't be Belfont, should be Williams Porter. Heck, you can even make an argument for New York City because 99 will take you to New York City. Here we get a mileage sign telling us that Belfont is 13 miles away and Lewistown is 32 miles away. And now we finally get to our split with northbound 99 and 220. Sign for Belfont, which again, nope, shouldn't be Belfont. And US 322 eastbound gets the sign for Pennsylvania University and State College or Pennsylvania State University State College. I'm not really sure. Todd said, Todd from Control City Freak says apparently it must be all five words in one group or something. I don't, I don't know. Either way, we're going to move on. At the actual split with US 322, when we get off the ramp, we can see that we are signed for State College and Lewistown. And I'm going to be honest here, I'm really conflicted about this. Obviously, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this is the way that most Western Pennsylvania traffic bound for Harrisburg would take to get there. So I think we should have Harrisburg on this sign, and in fact, in Harrisburg, maybe a little bit of spoilers for my Westbound video, but in there, they do sign State College and Lewistown both. So you can make the argument that at this point, US 322 should be signed for Harrisburg because state capital and three interstates all meet there. However, I think that Lewistown isn't terrible because we meet the parent group of US 322 US 22 and we also get another three digit we also get another three digit three digit auxiliary route of US 322 522 and on both of those roads you can get to quite a number of places in Pennsylvania so overall I'm fine with Lewistown being on that sign I suppose but I also wouldn't cry if Harrisburg was put on there instead <coughs> And as we exit on to just US 322 by itself, once again, I just wanted to take a moment and show you guys this wonderful view of Mount Nittany and Happy Valley. Even though technically we don't really care about 99 and 220 because we are off of it. But again, just wanted to show some lovely scenery. The first interchange we have after we split off of US 220 and Interstate 99 is Pennsylvania 26 and this is the road that will take you to downtown State College so woohoo my hometown and once again we can see a US 322 sign just for Lewistown the next junction we have is with Pennsylvania Route 45 for Oak Hall and Bullsburg and Oak Hall isn't even really a town or anything. It's really just a bunch of houses. And it's kind of really an extension of Lamont, Pennsylvania, where I lived from the ages of 4 to 18, although my parents divorced when I was 9, so I, I only really spent half of my life from the ages of 9 to 18 there. But either way, I don't think Oak Hall should be on this sign. I think it should be Lamont and Bullsburg instead, or just honestly put it put State College on there again. Because, you know, big biggest town that pretty much we're gonna see for the rest of Pennsylvania, except for when we go into the Philly metro area. And any other reasons why you could consider State College Control City worthy. 
And then we meet the junction for eastbound Pennsylvania 45, which is signed for Old Fort. And again, I really do not agree with Old Fort because it is basically, again, just a collection of buildings and such on the south side of the town of Center Hall. And I think it should just say Center Hall on this sign and not Old Fort. Because pretty much that's where you're gonna go if you head on eastbound 45. You're gonna go to Center Hall. Here the four-lane divide expressway ends again and we have to slow down to 45 miles an hour. And here we get a unique yellow sign telling us that we are going to have a lot of at-grade intersections on this two-lane portion of US 322 and that it will last for eight miles. We get our first mention of the relatively recently completed Pennsylvania 144 interchange which goes north to Potter's Mills. And then we get our exit here. Although, to get to Potter's Mills, you have to go through a roundabout and backtrack a little bit to go onto Pennsylvania 144. And in fact, really getting off of westbound 322 to 144, either way, you kind of have to go a bit of a ways to get to 144. So they probably could have constructed this interchange better, but it is nice that we at least have a little bit more four-lane expressway between State College and Harrisburg. Although that missing gap will fully be completed eventually, although there is no set schedule for when that will begin just yet, they're still in the planning process. That construction will be quite a long ways in the future. As we head along the brand new expressway portion of US 322, we get another mileage sign. This one is for Milroy being at 8 miles and Lewistown 17 miles. And then the next exit that we have is for Sand Mountain Road. And if you're going to Pennsylvania Route 144 northbound off of westbound 322, I would advise you to take this exit as it's a little more direct. You can just get off of that road and it eventually will take you to Pennsylvania 144 North. So th then we get another mileage sign for Milroy and Lewistown, a couple more miles down the road. And here we are leaving Center County as we head into Mifflin County. So goodbye to my home county. And it's kind of funny to me. We're at the top of seven mountains here. And a lot of Pennsylvania County lines happen to be located at the top of mountains. And I think that's kind of funny. In fact... I'm going to throw up some more instances of this this being the case on the screen so you can see just how many county lines in Pennsylvania are on mountaintops. I think it's really funny and coincidental and interesting. After we get to the bottom of the seven mountains, we can see that we will have our exit for Milroy here in two miles and we get a look at Pennsylvania scenery at its finest. This is an absolutely beautiful view as we go around this curve. Wow. We can see here that we get to go at a speed limit of 65 miles an hour for a brief section just outside of Milroy. And here is the ramp for Milroy. There are like a couple restaurants and a couple gas stations there. One of which being a Dairy Queen, in case you would like to go get a blizzard or something there. And now we got another mileage sign. And for the first time, Harrisburg is on the bottom line. 
Lewistown being 7 miles away, Harrisburg 67. Here we got an exit for Pennsylvania Route 655, which is signed for Belleville and Reedsville, although Pennsylvania 655 ends in Reedsville just after getting off of this ramp. So again, I don't understand why Pennsylvania 655 doesn't just end right here, but it is what it is. And then after that interchange, we get another mileage sign for Lewistown and Harrisburg. And we can see that once again, now we have to slow down to 55 miles an hour, which is one of the two speed limits that you will see for most of this route, 45 or 55. As we start to get onto the outskirts of Lewistown, we get the Burnham exit, and we also get Yeagertown on this sign. And off of this exit is Vince's Pizza, and in my opinion, this is one of the best local pizza places you can find here in Central Pennsylvania. And if you get, if you are in the Lewistown area, I highly recommend you to get off at this exit. Or if you're heading westbound on 322, I recommend getting off at the Electric Avenue exit instead because that that road will directly lead here eventually and then you can just get right back on to us 322 at the burnham exit as we start to get closer to downtown lewistown we get a laundry list of exits that you can take and here we get an overhead sign telling us that we're at the junction for US 22, the parent route, and another three digit auxiliary route of US 22, 522. West 22 and South 522 will split off for Mount Union, and we're going and we are going to be concurrent with both of these these other routes as we head towards Harrisburg. Once again, as is the case with many concurrencies on US 322, US 522 leaves our route as it is signed for Walnut Street. And frankly, I think Sealands Grove should be on that sign because eventually 522 will have its northern terminus there at a junction with US, US routes 11 and 15. Here we have a very unique situation where we are going to be going over a railroad crossing on a four-lane expressway. So I think that is very interesting. We get these signs telling us that a train is coming when these lights are flashing. And here at said railroad crossing, we get our East Charles Street exit. Here we got another mileage sign for Mifflin Town being 13 miles away and Harrisburg being 60 miles away. And from now on, all of the mileage signs will have Harrisburg on the on the bottom line. So I'm not really going to show any more of these, at least for quite a while, because I don't think it's really that important. And we're just going to do a big skip ahead again after we take a look at some more things that we can see just outside of Lewistown. Such as this Borough of Lewistown sign that we get for some reason. Probably being that the town limits of Lewistown are a bit weird in the area where we go on US 322. This is just telling us pretty much that we're back in the town limits for a little bit. And then here we go into the mountains on US 22 and 322. It is looking very beautiful right here. 
And here we get our reassurance shields for by far the longest concurrency that US-322 will have on its entire route. This concurrency will last pretty much almost all the way to Harrisburg. Once again, blowing the length of pretty much any other concurrency that US-322 has on its entire route out of the water. And we can see once again in the distance that our speed limit has increased again to 65 miles an hour. Here we get a fishing and boating access area for the Juniata River. And in my case, it is also a nice spot to watch trains on the Norfolk Southern Pittsburgh line, which is parallel to us throughout this Juniata River water gap. I am, I am known to have been called Trainboard 437 that was my old YouTube channel name, and then I closed that one down because I thought it was cringe, and I thought that just having my last name be my channel name was better. And before we skip ahead for a little bit, here is one last look at this area in the fall when we actually have colorful leaves on the trees as opposed to when I was complaining about the view from Interstate 79 not looking like this on street view, so that's pretty cool. As we round this curve into Perry County, we can see in the distance a brand new feature for this route, or at least it's only been there for about a year or so and we get some mild mileage signs these display the distance that us 22 has been in pennsylvania so far and we also get them for a little bit when we get to the next county of dauphin county where harrisburg is located in although i kind of wish that juniata county would get some of these as well i I think these are helpful for drivers, although maybe not super, so, but I, I don't know, I just, I just think they're cool. PennDOT, please put some in Juniata County, okay? The next mileage sign we'll take a look at has the junction of US routes 11 and 15 listed on the top line, and we are now only 26 miles away from Harrisburg. A couple miles away from that US 11 and 15 interchange, we have to slow back down to 55 miles an hour, and we can also see that we are getting a rare left exit for the community of Watts. Here is our junction for US routes 11 and 15, and they are signed northbound for Sealands Grove and Camp Hill, which I think Sealands Grove is okay because that's the junction with US 522, and it's a bit of a ways from here, and and not so much for Camp Hill. I think that should be like Gettysburg or something. Although I have fond memories of Camp Hill. When I was younger, and my, my dad would leave me with my grandparents down in Northern Virginia, we, we used to take, take US 15 before 99 was completed and there was an Arby's at Camp Hill that my dad and my grandpa and I, we would meet at. And I always got their chicken fingers because I did not have a palate back then. I was very picky about my food. And also in the distance we can see a blue sign for entering Dauphin County as opposed to white. And we can see here that our expressway is ending. We have to slow down to 45 miles an hour. And we will have junctions with Pennsylvania State Routes 147 and 849. And we can see that we will be entering a congested area for two miles. The Juniata and Susquehanna Rivers combine forces. And we can see that we have a beautiful view of the water heading down towards Harrisburg on this bridge. 
On the other side, our speed limit increases once again to 55 miles an hour. And here we're parallel with the Norfolk Southern Buffalo line. The next mileage sign we see has Interstate 81 on the top line, and we are now just 12 miles away from Harrisburg, four miles after the Interstate 81 junction. And then the next mileage sign has the same things listed on it, just that we are now four miles closer. We meet the famous Pennsylvania Railroad Rockville Bridge, and an interesting fact about the largest stone railroad bridge in the world is that even though we are looking at it perpendicularly from US 22 and 322, this bridge actually runs east to west because we're going southeast at this point and not due east as you might think from the direction that both of these highways are signed. And now, after our long 60 mile or so concurrency with US-22, it splits off for downtown Harrisburg, and it'll eventually meet Pennsylvania Route 230. I don't know why there isn't a 2 Pennsylvania 230 there instead of just the regular 230 shield. But now we can see that we were meeting Interstate 81 at this junction, and we see the control cities of Hershey and Hazleton, which, nope, Hazleton should not be there. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, though. 81 southbound going to Carlisle, and Todd from Control City Freak would rather see that as Hagerstown, Maryland, or Roanoke, Virginia, which I, I agree with. Let, let's, let's have the fun signing of a Virginia city in Pennsylvania. That would be cool. And we can see that this interchange is pretty complex. There's a lot of ramps and stuff that can take you between the different roads that all intersect at this interchange here. We get onto this ramp to get onto Interstate 81 northbound, which you can see at the left side of the screen in this picture. And once again, our concurrency with northbound Interstate 81 is very short. We will be getting off here at exit 70 to follow Interstate 83 southbound for Hershey and York. And the York should absolutely be Baltimore, although Hershey is fine for US 322 because, you know, Hers Hershey's chocolate. Global confectionery leader since. 1994. That was always the ads at the Penn State hockey games. But anyway, northbound Interstate 81 will take you to Interstate 78. And we got Hazleton and Allentown. Honestly, you know what? I think it would be fine to put New York there because both of these roads can technically take you to New York, although 78 is a bit more direct and faster. So we could have just New York City there, or we could just have Wilkes-Barre and Allentown or New York City or something like that. But nope, Hazleton should not be on there. Put like Wilkes-Barre or New We're going to continue on to Interstate 83. And here at exit 47 on Interstate 83, we are splitting off for Hershey and Eisenhower Boulevard as Interstate 83 continues on into Harrisburg and has the stupid control city of work, which should be Baltimore instead, as we also have the exit for Interstate 283 to the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And we can see a little bit of green out on these signs. These signs did not used to say Harrisburg International Airport and Eisenhower Boulevard. This picture is from like 2021 or 2022, I think, something like that. If we look a year prior, we can see that it used to say Airport and Lancaster for 283 and Hershey, Dairy Street, and Paxson Street for US 322. And I think I like this better, honestly nicer and 
indeed, those are streets that US 322 will be intersecting. As we get off of the ramp, we can see our pull through sign for US 322 going to Hershey. And we also see Paxson Street on the sign, and immediately we can get off for Dairy Street. Here we get a pull through on this bridge for Hershey, a quarter of a mile ahead, and that the exit for Paxton Street will be next right. And if you want to go back to southbound Interstate 83, you can stay in the right lane. We have a another bridge that has an overhead sign for US 322 going to Hershey and a sign for 2 Interstate 83 South Paxton Street. We go under some more train tracks and here is the actual split for Paxton Street and we get one more pull through for US 322 eastbound going to Hershey. And now finally here is our ramp to continue eastbound on US 322 and we get a couple of reassurance shields here in case you are not paying attention and once again we can see here that this is another pretty complex interchange in the Harrisburg area we are directly parallel with Interstate 83 northbound traffic here and it is signed to Interstate 81 Again, stupidly for Hazleton and State College, although I agree with State College. And here we got another mileage sign, this one telling us that we have been on US 322 for 221 miles in Pennsylvania. Although I looked it up and that is actually incorrect. To this sign is actually 268 miles from the Ohio border. That mileage actually starts in Franklin. So I think these mileage signs should either be completely replaced or taken down because I think they're completely pointless, honestly. After the mile 222 sign, they just cease to exist. So once again, PennDOT at work. So stupid. But anyway, here we get a mileage sign for Hummelstown, Hershey, and Lebanon. Lebanon being 20 miles away, although frankly, I don't think Lebanon should even be there because it goes away soon after. We don't get another sign for Lebanon after this. Um, it should be another town that we have coming up. Well, we'll talk about that more in a, in a minute or so because this video is already getting really long. Here we go by a Norfolk Southern Railroad Yard where they load and unload shipping containers off of trains. I think that's really cool. You know, if there's one thing that I like transportation related that it isn't roads and control city signage, it is trains. Hence why I had that stupid username a while ago. As we approach Hershey, we get another instance of a railroad crossing over our four-lane expressway. So that is really interesting. And now as we come to the US 422 interchange here in Hershey, we get in, we get a sign saying that we need to get off this exit, stay on US 322 East, going to Africa, US 422 going straight ahead. And this interchange was requested by the Dirt Pog, who was one of my main inspirations along with Todd from Control City Freak to make this and potentially future videos. And even if he hadn't asked to see this interchange, I would have done it anyways, because if we look in the distance on this next picture, you can see that there is a railroad bridge here, along with a bunch of restaurants. My mom used to take me to this interchange, and we would sit in this big parking lot over there with all these restaurants and stuff. 
and we were we would watch train. I think I think it's a pretty cool spot for doing so, even though the line isn't really that active. But anyway, here we come to another roundabout, and we can see that we have to go through the pretty much the straight ahead exit on the roundabout to stay on US 322 East. And I think Ephrata is, is the right sign because as we get to the out, outskirts of Ephrata, here we have our first of two major junctions that we will have near this town. The first of which being Pennsylvania Route 272 being signed southbound for Lancaster and Akron. That being Akron, Pennsylvania. And we also have a pretty much interstate kind of interchange here and northbound 272 is signed for Reading and if we look on Pennsylvania Route 272 we are still signed eastbound 322 for Ephrata because we are not quite downtown yet. On the other side of Ephrata we get a junction with US Route 222 and it is signed south for Lancaster and north to Interstate 76, the Pennsylvania Turnpike for Reading. And this is also a rare diverging diamond interchange. We don't have very many of those here in Pennsylvania, and there are not that many more in this great country of the United States of America. After that, we get a mileage sign with three towns on it. The first one being Hinkletown, which is just a small, nothing kind of community like the ones that US-322 goes through in Ohio, so I don't think that's necessary to be there at all. And then we get <laughs> Blue Ball, six miles away, and Honeybrook being 14 miles away as our bottom line place. Here in Blue Ball. <laughs> We meet Pennsylvania Route 23, and it is signed eastbound for Morgantown and westbound for Lancaster. US 322 still being signed for Honeybrook. And in Honeybrook, we meet Pennsylvania Route 10. It is signed for Compass and Parkersburg, going southbound and northbound for Morgantown. And here at this junction we can see that US 322 is signed eastbound for Downingtown 13 miles away and that is really the western edge of the Philly metro area so frankly at this point I think it would be okay to start signing Philadelphia even though US 322 does not really go through Philadelphia but you know it's it's Philly. Philly's Philly. Like, why would you not sign Philly? Here we have an intersection with Pennsylvania Route 82 and US 322 is signed for Downingtown and Honeybrook. Pennsylvania 82 being signed for Coatesville. And we meet US Route 30, which is signed westbound for Coatesville. And we have to go straight through this intersection to stay on US 322. We will not be concurrent with US 30, surprisingly, after all these other concurrencies that we've had. And now here we get to the turn for eastbound US 30, although the sign says that this is eastbound US 322. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say US 30. And it gets the pitiful patrol city of Exton. Why is it not Philadelphia? US 30 goes to Philadelphia. Why would you not sign Philadelphia? Oh my, oh my goodness. This is Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Provincial Control City signage at its finest. It should absolutely be Philadelphia. Why would you not have Philly on there? <sighs> And according to Panda, maybe it really should be US 322 on this sign. Because if we look back 10 years ago in 2012, 
we can see that the US-322 shield has always been there, is still there. Oh my goodness gracious, this is so stupid. This intersection makes no sense with its signage. And we can also see that we get a junction for Alternate Truck East Business 30, even though we're literally getting onto US 3 itself. So, that's really weird as well. But, Pennsylvania! Pennsylvania! And here we get another really funny US. US 30 related sign for the end of this alternate truck business route for West 30. And then we can see that here we will be concur concurrent with East Business US Route 30. And we have to make a left turn to stay on US Route 322. And at this right turn to stay on US 322 East, we can see that we are assigned for Westchester as opposed to Philly. Because why would you sign your biggest city? Pennsylvania, once again. And here we get a sign that we will be meeting Business East 322, and in the distance we get a sign telling us that if we want to go to Chester and Wilmington on US 322 East, we will need to keep left. This sign tells us that to get on to Business 322 East for Westchester, you will want to get in the right lane. And this sign here tells that through trucks will need to follow US 202 and 322, which will be concurrent for a short distance. And we can also see that you can get to Pennsylvania Route 3 at this junction, although we don't quite meet Pennsylvania Route 3 right here. It is a little bit of a ways before we get to Pennsylvania Route 3, so I don't know why there isn't a 2 East Pennsylvania 3 sign here. And on this sign, we can see that Wilmington and Chester are the places signed. I think Wilmington is for US 202, but it should not be Chester for US 322 for sure. Honestly, really, why not just have one arrow for Philadelphia? And here is our junction with southbound US 202. There is no movement to get to northbound 202. Here we get one of actually two laundry lists of Westchester exits. And we can see Pennsylvania 3 is in three quarters of a mile. So again, not really sure why we didn't get a 2 Pennsylvania 3 earlier. And as we merge into US 202, we get a mileage sign for 10.6 miles, I guess, left in Pennsylvania on US 202. And then we get, we get an overhead pull-through sign for Wilmington and Chester. Here's our exit for Pennsylvania Route 3, sign eastbound for Newtown Square and nothing westbound because it will be ending soon. And we were already told that you can take Pennsylvania 3 to Westchester. Here is another list of Westchester exits, although these don't really have anything interesting to talk about on it. On it. And here, at this junction with US Route 1, US Route 202 splits off to go southbound, and we will be concurrent with northbound US 1 as we go to Concordville. Again, again, should be filling. And here, as we split from northbound US 1, we can see that we are heading to Interstate 99 as we go to Chester. Although, I, I guess I can maybe see why Chester would be signed, because it is technically the last town that US 322 will go through in Pennsylvania, but technically it's still like a suburb of Philly, so 
I don't know why. Why not just have Philly? Here we get a sign that we will be heading straight to northbound Interstate 95. We won't have an option to get on southbound Interstate 95. And here is the actual junction with the, these two shields telling us to stay left to get on to 322 and 95 because otherwise we will be getting on to just a regular street. And as soon as we get on to Interstate 95 North, we can see that US 322 Eastbound will be splitting from Northbound 95. And that pretty much you have to get from the far left lane to the far right lane in three quarters of a mile if you want to stay on US 322 if you're getting on right here. So. We get, sign, we get a sign for Commodore Berry Bridge in New Jersey because for whatever reason we just can't have a New Jersey sign because I guess Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, because PennDOT just hates New Jersey Department of Transportation and vice versa as Todd said in his coastal northeast ranking of the state DOTs. So anyway, here is our split from Interstate 95 North, our exit to Commodore Berry Bridge New in New Jersey, exit 4 on Interstate 95. And here we merge in with traffic that would be coming from southbound 95 and westbound 322. And immediately after, we get a sign telling us that this exit for Pennsylvania 291 is the last exit in Pennsylvania. And here is the beginning of the Commodore Berry Bridge. We can see that pedestrians and bicycles are prohibited on the bridge. We are not supposed to walk or bike on the bridge. And now here we get our pull through sign for US 322 East, New Jersey. Four reasons. Stupid. Absolutely stupid. And here is a look from the Commodore Berry Bridge from the state line of Pennsylvania and New Jersey as we cross the river. And the first sign that we see in New Jersey is telling us that if we want to get to these different highways, we should follow 322 East. And then we get a sign telling us that we will have an interchange with US Route 130 to 295 North. There is no movement to southbound 295 at this interchange. That is coming up in three quarters of a mile. And then here we get our first sign at this interchange. 130 is signed south for Pensgrove. 295 North will be for Trenton, or rather 132 to 95 and then we get east 322 to southbound 295 for Glassboro now I think at this point you could probably just go straight to Atlantic City although if not I think there's another option for control city that US 322 could have here which I will throw up on the screen because I forget what exactly it was called, but it is the junction with US Route 206. So I think that could be a fine town to sign here. But for now, we just got Glassboro, which, yeah, I guess there could be worse up here. Here's the split for US 130 South to Pensgrove, and we get the other signs that we just saw. We have our interchange for northbound 130 to Interstate 295 to go to Camden and now we're we just have the US 2 we just have the US 322 pull through sign for Glassboro. This is the 231st picture I have taken of this route. Yeah I, I probably went way more into the road geek leads here than I showed up for this video, but I hope you're enjoying the content nonetheless. This this has been a lot of fun to work on. 
and at the eastern edge of this interchange. Wow! We actually get a Welcome to New Jersey sign! Wow! Thank you, New Jersey! Usually you don't do welcome signs. On Interstate 78, you don't have a welcome sign. On Interstate 80, you don't have a welcome sign. Wow! That's incredible! We actually get a Welcome to New Jersey sign here! Why wouldn't you have those on these other routes that more people are likely to be seeing a welcome sign on? Do miracles never cease to exist? Anyway, now we get one more pull-through sign for US 322 East going to Glassboro. And here we actually get a mileage sign telling us that we have been on US 322 for two and a half miles eastbound here in New Jersey. And these actually hold up all the way until the end of the road. So I like I like that. That's that's cool that New Jersey's doing that. Also really cool that they have that welcome sign. They could learn a thing or, or two about that by putting it on their Here's our junction for Interstate 295 southbound, and if we look at this interchange, there's actually no movement to northbound 295, so that's why we had it mentioned at that other interchange for US Route 130. And if we look on Interstate 295, US 322 eastbound is signed for what the hell? I completely disagree with that. Why wouldn't it be Glassboro like we saw earlier? Or heck, just go straight to Atlantic City because that's where this road ends and Atlantic City is pretty famous. As we near the town of Glassboro, we meet New Jersey Route 55 and it is going north to Malaga and and that is the southbound Control City. Northbound it goes to... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Although I think it should be Philadelphia because... You know, it's it's, Phil, it's Philly. Why not have signage for it? But again, again, the feud between Pennsylvania and New Jersey DOTs. Apparently. I, I imagine. So, so stupid and petty. And if we look on New Jersey Route 55, we can see that once again, 322 East is signed for Glassboro. Here in Glassboro, we meet New Jersey Route 47, and we are going to be concurrent for a little bit with southbound New Jersey Route 47. And we can see that we get our first sign for US 322 East Atlantic City, and that will hold up for the rest of the route. We split from southbound New Jersey 47 and make a left turn to continue on to US 322. We get the last mileage sign that we will see in this video with Atlantic City on the bottom line 41 miles away, and that, that, that works for me. Weirdly enough, we get a Junction US 322 sign. I have no idea why that would be there. But we can see that we are also going to be having a junction with northbound New Jersey Route 42. And it is going to Camden and Sicklerville as we make this right turn to stay on US 322 East. We meet New Jersey Route 54 and it is signed for Buena and Millville going southbound. And northbound is signed for Hamilton and Trenton. If we look on New Jersey 54, we are still eastbound 322 Atlantic City. Here we are meeting US Route 40 and we are actually going to be concurrent with US Route 40 going eastbound for the rest of US 322's route. And we can see that US 40 is signed west for May's Landing. And here at mile marker 50 on US 322 eastbound, we can see the eastbound lane for US 40 merging in with us. We meet the Garden State Parkway, although we don't have 
a direct interchange with the Garden State Parkway. Instead, you have to get on to County Route 563 to get onto the Parkway. Meanwhile, we will make a left turn here, stay on US 40 and 322 eastbound. And just a few miles west of Atlantic City, we meet our final US route, which is US Route 9. And to go north on US 9, you have to get into the left lane and make a left turn there. Whereas southbound US 9 is accessed by this stoplight up ahead, where you will make a right turn. And going southbound on US 9, it is signed for Cape May, although I looked for quite a while on US 9 going northbound, but I could not find a control city for it. So, yeah, I don't know what that's signed for, and I won't find out. Here we get a sign telling us that we are entering Atlantic City, and if we look over to our right, we can see that we have a pretty cool view of all this water in the Atlantic City area. And we are just about to reach the end of US Routes 40 and 322. Although we have to get over a drawbridge before we can we can reach the end. So we have a signal here telling us if the drawbridge is raised or lowered and where to stop in the case that the signal is red. And finally, at long last, we come to the end of our journey here on US 322, as we also end US 40 eastbound, but we don't get an end sign for either of these US routes, which is especially disappointing in the case of US 40 because, you know, it's US 40, and almost cross-country major east-to-west US highway. I'm really disappointed in New Jersey DOT. Why is there not an end sign for either of these routes? You know, you, you didn't play a perfect game here, but honestly, I was not that disappointed in some of the things that you did, you know, like mile markers on 322, having that welcome sign, which you should have more of, but this is a disappointing end to this gargantuan video of US 322. Hey everyone, Future Court here with a little bit of a last minute addition to the video. So, originally I wasn't going to have my way it should be for eastbound US 322 because originally when I recorded it, I had no idea what the way it should be was going to be. But now, here in the editing stage, I think I have figured it out. So, here is Quarter Launch 437 the way it should be for US 322 eastbound. And I'm going to say that right out of Cleveland, it should be Youngstown because there really isn't anything worth signing in eastern Ohio until you get to the junction with Ohio Route 11 which you can take southbound to get to Youngstown. And then after that, I would sign Meadville for the junction with Interstate 79, or you could even make an argument for Pittsburgh because Interstate 79 goes to Pittsburgh. But then after that, I would say that Franklin is okay after Meadville the way they have it because of the junction with US 62 and again, pretty big town as far as this road is concerned in western Pennsylvania and then after that I would say that maybe Brookville is a bit more important than Clarion although I could see maybe some people would have an argument for Clarion over Brookville but I personally think that the junction with Pennsylvania 28th and 36th and also the major truck stop would be a reason to sign Brookville over Clarion but either way after that I would sign Dubois because of the junction with US 119 and US 219 
all the places that you can get to on those roads. And then after that, I would honestly just skip Clearfield and go straight to State College because Clearfield is really not that important unless, I guess, you're hungry and you want to get a bite to eat from one of the restaurants that you can get to by taking Pennsylvania Route 879 up to Interstate 80. Or if you just cannot make it past Clearfield on a tank of gas. But regardless, I think that just skipping Clearfield and going straight to State College after Du Bois would be the move. And then from State College, I'm honestly okay with Lewistown being on the signs because of the junction with US 22 and 522. All the places you can get to on those roads. Although, once again, I could see an argument for Harrisburg being signed as State College, but I think that either is okay. Although, out of Lewistown, absolutely 100%, it should be Harrisburg for all the reasons. And then after that, I would put Hershey because of the Chalka Factory and also the junction with US 422. And then after that, I'd, I'd sign Ephrata because of the junction with US 222. And then after that, I would do Philadelphia because, you know, Philly is Philly. Once again, just like Harrisburg, why would you not have Philly on there? And then pretty much once you get to New Jersey, I would just sign Atlantic City the whole rest of the way. There really isn't anything sign worthy in New Jersey, just like in Ohio. So with that, this concludes the US 322 Eastbound video. Thank you so much again for watching. Be sure to leave a, a like on the video if you enjoyed what you saw here. Please leave a comment down below if there ha if you have any feedback for me or if you want to discuss this highway a little bit more and of course ring the bell to stay notified of future videos that I do. So once again, this is the end of the US 322 Eastbound video. So until next time, everyone, goodbye.